All right, so if the first step is constructing a head, and then I've done it with these various pieces, um, I kind of finished it off by branching it into the back of the neck by just duplicating that shield. But the problem is it starts to look what I call a little copy pasty. You know, we recognize the exact same pixels in the exact same order in the exact same way. So that's where we want to use our transform tools and get in there and just shift it around a little bit. Work with it so it's a little bit different. And then use your adjustments to make it a little bit different as well. So for instance, this is behind the other one, so it's going to be a little bit darker. And maybe it's not going to have quite the intensity of the highlight. Right. It also might reflect the color slightly differently. So if I do color balance, I can shift it you know, to a slightly different use of that magenta. And that makes a big difference. And then the, for the one behind it, same thing. I want to warp it a little bit. I might end up erasing away from it a little bit. And I'm most interested in this shape I get in the silhouette. And then I can play with the levels, and it seems tedious, you know, to, to talk through it all, but really this is, it goes very fast. This is just best practice. And then I think, okay, well on this one, now I can work on some of these internal edges, right? I can select all that and then I can use the soft eraser and erase away. I can also use the burn tool and kind of darken the remaining edges. And then I can work on the one underneath and burn that in certain places so it doesn't look so copy pasty. Then go to my original and do the same. Oh, right in there. So all of these tools come in, come in handy when we're compositing things together. Levels, adjustment, dodge, burn, eraser. All right. And now I've got these all in different components, all my head things. I think I want to reveal the eye a little bit better. So why don't I take all three of the layers of the horn and just lift it up a little bit. So I can reveal the eye. And then I'm thinking I want to erase away a little bit. Just trying to get an idea of my creature here from the jaw. But maybe not with 100% opacity, maybe with more like 50%. I don't want that hair to be so overwhelming around the, the muzzle. So I want that uh, scale texture to kind of come through still. And then I can burn it, 
because it's in the shadow. And I can do the same thing to the head reference. Now I want that eye to be stronger. And there's a few things I can do. I can lessen the distractions around it. Whoops, wrong layer. I can find my own cutouts. That looks a little too artificial. And then if I want to do something a little crazy with the eye, like give it a big red eye, I can always select it, duplicate it, this is internal compositing, transform it, make it bigger. I can play with its own levels. Big eyes can be fun, right, to play with. So let's play with its levels, brighten up its midtones and its highlights. Right? I can even select the black Black is black of it, duplicate that, go to image adjustment hue saturation and click on colorize to change its color to something else. Right now it's a blue, it'll lighten it up. But I can shift that to a red. I have to lighten it quite a bit, you know, to be a strong red. And then I can Gaussian blur that. And I can try layering that in, giving the eye kind of a weirdness. <laughs> but the easiest way to kind of integrate it is probably to kind of erase it subtly in there. So there's a little bit of red in there, in that crazy eye. Then I might combine all those elements. to give me the end effect. So even though I didn't use any extra reference, I really changed what the eye looked like with internal compositing. You know, from this to this. And that shows up better for my creature. So now I have all these layers, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine layers that are just making the head. So this is what I now want to do. Remember, it's like a car. I want to select all of them with shift, and then I'm going to click on the folder icon within the layer window, which is next to the new layer icon. And that puts them all into what's called a group. And I'm going to name that group head. By naming that group head, they're all separate layers, but now they're all connected. And so as I build the next part, I can move it out of the way. Oh, I still have the vulture in there. So let me take that vulture and move it behind. And this will be the transition into the chest. So I'm going to transform it, shrink it down a little bit, stretch it out a little bit. Warp it just a bit. There we go. 
Get rid of this stuff. Don't need this stuff. All right. And then what can I do, of course, to make that vulture kind of match with the rest of the head? I can play with its color balance and its levels. Its levels are, are just about right. I might deepen the shadows and brighten the highlights a little bit, but its color balance is way off. So I need a lot more reds in there. There we go. So it feels like it's a similar texture. All right, good. So now I've got some nice components to the head that I can move out of the way. It's all in a head group now. And I'm going to label that green. That's pretty much finished. So this is a good point. Whoops. I'm going to change my auto select to group instead of to layer, and then it will just select the whole group. And then I can start working on the arms and the chest and all of that. Okay. Um, at this point, I need to save it. I've let it go too long as just my sketch JPEG. So this is going to be my Carl assignment to fantasy creature. To the desktop. Save it. And anytime I want to update my save, I just hit Command S. Now I'm done with all this reference. I have other stuff I can use, like the horns. I don't think I'm going to use them right now, so let's leave them off. And now I'm going to start working on the forearms and the chest. And so I have this reference to help me get the arms where I want them. I'm going to actually try with distort to broaden them a little bit. Right, kind of in perspective, so it's more like they're coming out towards us. Distort keeps the structure a little bit stronger than warp does. I can use Command-T and scale it. And I can use skew as well for little adjustments. And now I can maybe go in and use warp to sync up where that elbow would be. Now this gives me just the anatomy. It gives me the structure on which to build new things. And so sometimes your reference changes from your sketch, right? And so you decide how much you're willing to change it. So now that I've done that, maybe I can do some internal compositing here, just like I did with the, the horn. And I can grab that paw and I can duplicate it, Command J, and then transform it and move it up. and distort it so its proportions are a little different. And get a sense for whether this could work or not. I'll erase away from it. But this is just to match my sketch. Yeah, and this just feels more stable. So I'm thinking I'm going to let this kind of control my pose. Okay. Now I build up on those forearms. I'm not going to erase away anything from them yet because I'm just building up on top. And I know I want kind of crazy hands. So I'm going to use this very large crab reference to make hands. Nice, clear focal point hands. 